turn cherry and i am the butts in the seat queen welcome to creating your own profitable event uh i am the founder and director of level up summit power up summit and i'm the co-founder of success women's conference where we had over 17,000 people last year and so i am here to tell you to stop having big old parties and start creating events that put dollars in your pocket so what makes me an authority on that as i told you before i'm the director one of the directors and founders of success women's conference and uh when we started that conference many years ago we started out because there was a need we knew what our mission and vision was uh, as we sat and talked through a meeting, we knew and we created that event that turned out over 540 people in less than a six month time frame. And yeah, that was back when I was still doing the feet, feet first. Look, just do it, right? And so, so I'm here to tell you that it is, it, it is always possible that you can create an event. And yes, it may not be the, all the time that you need, but I'm telling you at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that that event is profitable. Over the years, we have grown that, that conference, Success Women's Conference, over the years from 540 to almost 1,500 in person, right? And now virtually we're at 17,000 people. So what I normally talk about when I'm t teaching people how to create a profitable event, is five different essential things that you need to make sure that you do in order to make sure that you make money, right? So number one is make a plan. And make a plan is where we're, pro we're gonna focus today because we don't have a whole lot of time, but I wanna make sure that you know some of the essentials that go into that. Number two, build the team, build the right team, right? So we're going to go over that as well. And then number three, it creating uh, several streams of event income. Number four, selecting the right speakers. And number five, promoting your event. Now, all of these things are essential to making sure that you have a profitable, not just successful, but profitable event. So again, due to time, we're gonna focus on making a plan. And that's where you wanna start. You wanna always start with creating a plan that allows you to be successful. And so one of the first things you wanna do is decide why you wanna do the event. So many of us go into things, as I said before, feet first, but you wanna make sure that you know why. What is the purpose of you doing that event, right? So you wanna know your why. And on, right behind that, you want to create your mission statement and your vision. When we did Success Women's Conference, when we first started, we already knew that that was a cry in the community. For over 10 years, us women would talk about how we needed a conference, right? We were networking and meeting and attending chamber events, women business events. All those things were already here but the women were not feeling as if they were fed, is that if they were being inspired and empowered to take a leap. So we created that conference because we knew that women needed that desire to do that and they needed the push to do that along with the resources. So we created that conference, which, uh, which every year inspires and empowers it allows women to connect now from with women all over the world. And we also have men in attendance. And for those who are looking to, uh, to recharge their life or recharge their career, they're able to do that as well. So, so that being said, we also, I also tell people what's also really essential. Number two, the title. So your title of your event can really do a lot of things for your conference, right? 
it can speak to having the right audience at the event. If you notice the title, Success Women's Conference, it says what? That we're looking to help you be successful and we're targeting women. So in that title, it says what we're looking for. If you look at Level Up Summit, we are looking to help you level up. It's pretty simple. So some of the things, the reason why a title is important because it can sell your tickets. It can put butts in your seats before you even appear before them. So it is critical that you think about your title. I often tell people, sit in some private time and you can meditate, spend some time with God, whatever it is, but make sure that you focus. These are critical pieces that are going to determine the success of your conference. The next thing that can also lift your conference is the theme of the conference. Now, all conferences don't have theme, but a theme can be powerful if you add that to your conference as well. So that being said, what do I mean when I say theme? So uh, with some of my previous conference, like Level Up, we focused on your uh, leveling up your visibility and your profitability. I just basically said, I want to make sure if you level up your visibility, you're going to be profitable. And so that in itself tells you what we're looking to, you're looking to accomplish at that conference. No matter what room you're in, no matter what topic they're speaking on, that's what you're trying to accomplish at the end of the day. Same thing with success. Our title, Woman on Fire. Yes, Woman on Fire. That kind of says it all. That was the title of the conference. But we also had the subtitle, which was, we want you to start the year strong. Now that's all about making sure that you make a plan, you take action, and then you move on it, right? So that being said, the title speaks to the people. The theme speaks to the people and it puts butts in the seats. And what does butts in the seats mean? It means it increases your bottom line in your pocket. Now, now in addition to that, Number four is the dates of the conference. Now, in the past, we were all focused on in-person. And so the dates mattered even more because if you think about it, if you had an event and it was in town and you're a town, you have to make sure you look at, is there a festival going on? Is there a concert going on? Is there another uh, conference going on? All those things matter when you're choosing the dates of your conference. And you know what, even virtually now, you still wanna make sure that at least with the people that you normally work with, that you don't overstep each other by planning on the same dates. Sometimes it's just a little twist here and there to make sure that you can each support each other. So does dates matter? Yes, it should always be top of your list. And it is important that you look at essential, essential places to do that. Go to tourism or look on tourism because it's all going to come back anyway. So you want to go to tourism. You want to look, if you're in a town like mine, what's going on at the casinos? Who are they bringing in? Yeah, are people going to tune in that night? Because, hey, if you got some top name speak, uh, singer or performer on the same night that you're going to actually run your conference, you're probably going to lose some of your audience if you're focused locally. So make sure to look at all those little details when you're planning a conference and looking at your dates. Now, number five, location, location, location. It will always matter. Just like in the real estate business, it truly matters in the event planning business in the conference business, right? Because it is gonna determine your success. So let's start with if it's in person. What are some of the critical things that you need to look at when you're deciding on an in-person conference? Now, I can't go over every little detail, but I can give you some things that you can look at for sure if you're planning to host an in-person event. So, and before I go, 
through that, I want you to realize that in-person will come back in some form or fashion. So some of these tips, you're definitely going to make sure that you write down. You got to decide, is it going to be in your hometown or are you going to plan it for a different state? And when you're looking at a different state, you know, you still want to have uh, troops on the ground to help you with that as well. Now, some people had some Places have uh, coordinators that can help you with all the details. Sometimes you have to get somebody to help you with the logistics of your conference when you're out of state. Maybe you have a contact in that area, but it is important that you have eyes and ears that can help you uh, with the planning of your conference as well. In addition to that, you want to see if it's a place that people want to go, you know, there are many, uh, I mean, people love going to Las Vegas, you know, outside the town that we're in right now, New York and all those places, Florida, uh, many places, even the area that I live in here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, we have many casinos. So people look at that. How critical is, is that to your planning? It's essential if you are deciding where to host your place out of state. And I can tell you, when I was planning my conference Power Up Summit last year, it became very essential as I had planned to have it in the number one, one of my favorite places, New Orleans. And unfortunately, it got hit harder, hit the hardest during that time frame. So all those things matter. Location, location is always essential. Here's some of the other things to look at. Is the, the physical the physical location easy to get in and out of? Is, is, is that an easy thing? Because if it's not, it's going to impact who attends your conference. You know, is there an airport nearby for the people that are coming in? And I also say you want to go a little further. How much are the tickets that time of the year that you're planning your conference? Because that's a cost factor for people that are flying in. And it could be a cost factor to you if you're flying in keynotes or featured speakers as well. Trust me, I know. And so that being said, the traffic in the area of the, of the location is going to be essential as well. If I'm coming for a half a day and it takes me an hour to get to the location, well, that already says I got to take off the whole day just to get there. And if I can't afford to do that, you just lost that audience that could have came for at least a half a day, right? So keep that in mind because just because you can take off to be at your own conference doesn't mean that everybody else can. So location definitely does matter. I mean, traffic, that looking at that really does matter. And are there major construction going on in the area? So even if it's out of town, you still wanna look and see what's going on in that area. Uh, how far is the hotel from the actual event location? Now, if it's in the same hotel, well, great. Then you want to look and see at some other things that can help you. You know, sometimes when you have it in a hotel, there are a lot of other things that come in with that as well. Uh, sometimes the hotel already has flowers and things like that. that can really help you with cost reduction and keeping your costs down. And then so, and also the looks, because I always tell people if the building don't look good, nobody's coming to your conference. I don't care how it looks inside, it's gonna hurt your conference. So that's always essential as well. And I also tell people, look, look at the weather as well. We can't predict it, but you know, if it's that time of the year where you know it rains constantly, yeah, I can tell you at any event, and I've been doing events for almost 20 years now, and I can tell you that rain, no matter how much people pay for that ticket, does put a damper on your event. So always think about those things when you're planning. If it's April, you know there's showers, at least where I live. So therefore, you may want to consider, well, what time in April do I want to have that, right? So think about that. Um, and because it could really impact the sale of your ticket, the price of the hotel rooms. So when you're thinking about booking, the dates are going to impact the price of the hotel room, you know, and it's going to impact 
whether people come. If your ticket is too high, I can tell you in some areas, uh, hotels triple during 4th of July or any holiday for that matter. So therefore you've got to think about that when you're booking your dates. Now, most of the time holidays are not really a good time to have a, an event. And I would always say Christmas is never, that's just a no-go, don't have anything on Christmas. But now that we're in the space that we're in right now, that may be a little different. So remember that when you are um, choosing your location and your dates, all these things will impact whether it's successful now. That's the other location, right? Because now, mostly, we're virtual. And as I told you previously, we had over 17,000 people virtually. And I can tell you, based off the fact that in person, we've had anywhere from 1,100 to 1,500. And to be online and have 17,000, you know any conference of that size will never get rid of their virtual side because you can't go global as quick as you can on the digital platform. So look at conferences remaining either virtually or a hybrid, both virtual and in-person. So look for that coming back, but know that virtual will probably be around a lifetime as far as I'm concerned, at least for now. So what are some of the virtual platforms that you might wanna consider when you're planning your conference. And yes, these things really do impact your conference. People don't realize that sometimes, but there are a lot of things that really determines whether people think your conference is at a high level or not. So here are some of the platforms that you may wanna consider if you hadn't already considered or used them before. You have, of course, Zoom, uh, you have Hopin, you have uh, virtual summit, which is also a platform. There's a new one that I've recently been get connected with, Air Meet. Uh, then uh, StreamYard is a way to to uh, stream into some of the social media platforms. Then some people do Facebook Live. Uh, some people do Instagram Live. And now, yes, Clubhouse. Yes, people are starting to create events on Clubhouse. I personally can say that is me as well, but other people are creating conferences inside of Clubhouse because it's conversational and it's easy uh, for people to hop on and hop off. Now, right now, they're missing most of the market because people don't have access, but trust me, as that grow, that will be a platform to choose as well. Uh, now, what also you have to consider, and one more platform, there's several platforms that I have it listed, but you can also build your own broadcast page, which I love using that platform and other platforms. So I'm kind of a person that likes to use multiple platforms because you also got to consider these things when you're selecting a platform. You want to make sure if you're trying to have live interaction, you wanna make sure that you have an option for that, right? And so you'll have to look at different platforms, which one creates the experience that you're looking for. Uh, if you're trying to get a vendor experience, well, more and more conferences are trying to create that in-person vendor experience. So you wanna make sure that you start looking at that. So I, those are just some of the things uh, that you that you would need to consider when choosing what platform, whether it's in person or virtually, but know that virtually uh, is going to be around and in person will eventually come back. So I challenge you to, to make sure that you consider just some of these tips uh, when you are planning your conference, because at the end of the day, all of it will impact your bottom line. So who is, the next thing is, who is your target audience? Who are you trying to reach? Number one, is it a man? Is it men? Is it women? Is it both? Okay, those are just, does that matter? Yes, it really does matter, right? Number two, what race? Are you trying to target everybody? Or do you want to be specific? There are months like Black History Month, 
you're looking, hey, that is a target audience. So you may want to do that. Could be Hispanic month, right? So that could be, that's another audience. Women history month, you know, the focus is women. So that being said, there are things that you look at and why you're doing the event. All this goes back to the why in the first place. So then you want to look at the age group. What age group are you looking at? And why does this even matter? Do you want a millennial? Is that your main audience? You know, millennials are uh, what? I think 35, 25, somewhere in that, that age group. Uh, that being said, there are also the baby boomers and then there are the seniors. But why would you look at that anyway? How does that impact your bottom line? Well, to give you an example, I being right at the back of the baby boomers, really not, but that being said, I am looking for the elite experience. People like me, I'm going to come in and I want the full experience. So I'm going to buy that higher ticket. So those are the people buying tickets. Millennials are still, as they say, living their life. So they might hop on and they might get what I call the bus in the seat ticket, that bottom line ticket. So that being said, they're going to bring in the low end. So that is impacting your profitability. So if you do a mix, you, for me, I like a mix. Uh, some people like to focus on a certain area. And so it does determine where you sell and where you make money. So keep that in mind. And so that being said, um, next thing is uh, the audience type. Who, what type of people are you looking for? And what's, what's their occupation? You know, are they corporate? Are they entrepreneurs? Are they moms? Is that your focus? Uh, are they healthcare people? Are they marketing professionals? Are they HR focused, right? And when I talk about HR and healthcare, most of those are looking for CEUs, continuing education unit credits. So you want to keep that in mind too, because that draws them in even more. And then also, you might just want to focus on speakers and coaches. Or maybe you're doing something just for authors. But all of that determines what's your bottom line. And the other thing is, look at the level of income. Now, all these things, you're saying, well, how am I going to get all this information in the first way? You can do a survey. And you can get that information real easy to see how, you, what impacted your bottom line. It definitely want to collect that right after your conference. So your level of income, as I mentioned before, their actual occupation as well, whether they're a CEO, you know, head, or, or maybe they're just, hey, sometimes you get people that may be the secretary, but she still needs training and she still needs to be motivated. So different levels, different income, those things will decide whether that person can afford an elite ticket, a VIP ticket, or just an, you know, butts in the seat ticket, whether they come with their girlfriends or whether they're just coming along. So keep that in mind when you're scheduling and when you're planning out who is your focus, who's your target audience. Next, get your budget in line. So I'm gonna go through this briefly because I wanna make sure to go over, highlight a few things towards the end. So get your budget in order is essential. And so here are some of the three things that I tell people to do when you're creating your budget out. And you should do this as part of making your plan. And you always have the initial budget. And then as you go, you're going to change it. You're going to add to it and all those things. But this is where you want to start. You want to have a list with the columns. You want to have a column make, must have. You want to have a column that says would like to have. And then you have a column that says dream item, dream, something that you're dreaming about, but you might not be able to afford it, right? So what are some of the things that are really essential that's going to be on your list if you're planning an event? Number one, your venue or your platform in person or virtually, right? All of it costs, no matter what you're going to pay. So that is one of the first things that you should have on the list. So in that being said, 
what I say if it's on the platform side, virtually one platform might be more expensive than the other. So say for instance, you may have to go with Zoom because you wanna keep your budget low. Or you may say, well, I wanna go with something a little more high end like WOBA, you know, or something like that. So that being said, and there are plenty of others that I haven't listed that cost well more, or you might wanna build out your own. So it's your budget, this is really important. And then the other thing is, um, number two, your keynote and your featured speakers. How many you have, uh, who you have, and all that can determine and it can blow your budget if you're, if you're not being wise. So that's why I said you, you have to create a list. And sometimes your keynote is a dream item. It is a dream item versus something that you can truly afford. And I can personally talk to this because you're talking to somebody who in 2019, our budget was 200,000 plus. And I personally raised over 70,000 for that budget. So I know, you know, you can, you can raise a lot of money. You can also spend a lot of money if you don't plan your budget out right, or if you get in a spending and you're not tapering down. Because sometimes you just have to cut things off and go without, you know. But keep in mind when you're booking a keynote, it's not just a keynote. Sometimes they have an assistant. Sometimes they have a tribe. Sometimes you have to put limitations, you know, so that you can control that. And the same thing with featured speakers. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you're planning your budget. But when picking the keynotes and the feature, they must be relevant. I don't care how popular they are or how somebody that was on your dream list you thought was all that. If they haven't spoken in the last few years, they're probably not relevant. Do they have a tribe? Do they have people that are really following them? Not somebody else's site. Do they have their own site? Because that it is very important that a keynote has butts behind them, right? That they can bring, that their name will bring people to your audience. Otherwise, you could be spending a lot of money. And trust me, I have spent... As I told you, I, we've had a $200,000 budget. We have spent quite a bit of money on speakers. Uh, so we can, I can personally tell you, you need to make sure that they are relevant. Do your homework. Check their site. My children call me a cyber stalker. You know why? Because I'm checking out speakers all year long. I recruit speakers. I look at speakers all year long because I'm looking for people that have butts in the seat, right? So that's important. They are your ambassadors. They are, if they're, and if they're featured speakers, they really should be helping you promote as well because that's gonna help bring more dollars to your bottom line. And it's gonna help them bring dollars to their bottom line as well. So keep that in mind when you're speaking, picking speakers. What else is essential is marketing, marketing, is essential to your budget. And if you don't put it in your budget, it is going to impact your bottom line. Uh, it's very hard to be successful if you're not spending money on ads and promotion, graphics, website. I can go on and on, but it is critical that you have a marketing budget. It almost should be number one, but it definitely you want to make sure you have a marketing budget. And there's many things that go into that. So as I continue, I'm going to uh, talk about technology. Technology is on your budget list because if you're doing, whether in person or not, you're going to have to have a, um, a system, either active campaign, Infusionsoft, MailChimp, all those different systems, those email listing, those database systems, CRMs, you need that because that's part of your campaign as well. Uh, uh, click funnels. If you're doing a, a virtual event, many people use that. Text messaging. Many of you probably get messages for this event, right? And so um, those systems are important. And then there are many more that I can add to that. But also paid staff. You're probably going to have to have people 
you can't really run a conference, a successful conference, without having some people that you pay. Even admin, website, creative people are essential to that. Now, with the rest of the time, I want to quickly go over some things um, and talk about just some essential things under the other four topics. Number two is building, building the right team. You want to make sure that you have people on your team that can help you be successful. Having creative people on the team can help you um, uh, create the right, help you with your branding part, your look, uh, your color scheme, and also your title, your theme, and all those things. Your website people under here, your uh, graphic people, so many others are under that, under the uh, creative side of things. In addition, you have to have an admin person on board to help you push everything out. Yeah, so you may need a great VA. And if you don't have a great virtual assistant already, I suggest you get one anyway. Just truly been the best blessing I ever investment I've done. In addition to that, you got to have the people that that's help you get that money. So those are the people that don't mind hearing no, no, no until they get to a yes. You got to have a few of those. Trust me, you'll only have a few, but you'll have a few of those and you need them, right? So in addition to that, you got to have the other side, the people that tell you no, 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 because you got to have people that check you and keep you in line with your budget and tell you, hey, you're going to probably have to cut this because you really can't afford it. You need realistic people and y'all, it is not your family members. And you cannot be the one man show. So I challenge you to get the people that you need on your team. Those are just a few people that I highly recommend you doing. If you hadn't been doing this for 20 plus years like me, and even people like me, I don't function by myself. So that being said, this is something I teach. I coach on this all the time. So, and I talk about the different things that can help you. So that being said, the next thing is speaker. I want to go to uh, streams of income. Just remember, y'all, most people have to, to go outside of the box to create event income. Event income is essential. It's not just a ticket. I highly recommend people don't focus on the ticket. And if you're in the virtual world right now, you need a free ticket as well because we have too many choices. So that being said, there are many other opportunities to raise money, uh, but that's something I typically coach on. So feel free to contact me if you wanna actually work with me through this as well. So selecting the right speakers, as I told you before, keynotes are essential. You need to make sure you pick the right people and the right feature, the headliners, whatever you wanna call it. They're essential to making your conference successful. And if you are a speaker, just a few tips that you need to do to be ready to speak on anybody's stage. So one is number one, you must have a high resolution headshot. That's right, high resolution. That's no phones, no phones qualify for that, right? Because when we're doing and promoting the event, you may go in a magazine, no tell them where your photo's going to be. But that being said, they require high res resolution. We look at that. If you turn in something that came from the phone, most of the time, the computer will tell on you anyway. So therefore, invest in getting a good headshot. You can probably find somebody for 35 to 50. Don't get your family unless they're a professional but I highly suggest that you do that. An excellent proofed bio is really good as well. You definitely want to have a great bio that you submit, at least 150 words. That being said, you also want to make sure, if you can, get your uh, speaker website, your own personal website, not your business website, your, your own professional personal website. Also, here is a nugget. If you're asked to give a, uh, some clip of you speaking, use a system like Zoom. Make sure that you are ready and prepped, that you have your makeup, your hair, and everything done. 
take two minutes and submit that so people can see that you're able to speak. That's what we want to know. Can you actually put butts in the seat and make sure that you speak on your main topic or at least one of the two and one of the three and always have at handy your top three topics that you speak on at all times with the bullet points to go with it. Now, moving on from speakers, make sure that you promote your event. So one of of the main things I want to go over and the biggest nugget that I always tell people, get you some brand ambassadors. Now, that has made the difference in many conferences that I do because you know what? They promote during the conference. They promote before the conference. They promote even when I'm not in a room, when I'm in person. We have people that are in person in the area that I live and they're promoting the conference as well. So it allows you to be more places than one because these people are representing your brand. And yes, they must be people that know how to promote and is willing to promote. So yes, I stalk them as well. So that being said, make sure that you promote your event. Make sure through with promotion, you do things like buying ads and things like that in order to do that. Now that's a whole Promoting is a whole different uh, thing, and I can go on and on with that as well. But that being said, these are just some of the things that I teach people at all times to do uh, when, when creating their own event. If you would like to work with me further, you can go to kerncherry.com or Kurt, coachkern.com. Either way, you can reach me there uh, and set up a discovery call. You can also join me as we continue this conversation, part of this conversation during one of my visibility masterminds. And if you're interested in that, again, go to currentcherry.com and let us know that you would like to participate and you heard it here during this conference. Again, this is, you can go to currentcherry.com to connect with me. You can find me on any pretty much any social media stages right now. My favorite right now has outdone the other favorite. LinkedIn has always been my favorite site, but now that's Clubhouse. And so I tell people, Kern Cherry on Clubhouse, Kern Cherry on LinkedIn. You can go to Facebook and join me there. And I'm always looking for speakers as I have several conferences coming up. So you can also go to Time to level up.com if you like to speak, powerupsummit.com, and of course, Success Women's Conference. So you can go to successconference.info as well if you like to speak there as well. In addition to that, again, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm even on uh, TikTok and Instagram and all those other places as well. I'm Kern Cherry, your butts in the seat queen, uh, talking on how to create a profitable event.